In this episode, we take a look at what input levels you should use when recording to your Zoom H1 and an external lavalier mic. Check this out. Lots of questions about what you should set your input level to when you're recording with the Zoom H1. And that's a really hard question to answer. But for those of you with short attention spans, I would say aim for somewhere between 40 and 60. Then once you bring your audio in, normalize to minus 6 dB, and that will get you the best noise performance based on this little test I did here. So for those of you that uh, just want the bottom line, you are dismissed. Now, for those of you that want to dig in a little bit more and kind of geek out a little bit, here's a little test that I ran using the Zoom H1. And in this case, we're using an external mic, the HMN Sound Flat Response uh, Lavalier mic. This is a new one, haven't uh, reviewed it yet, but will be in the next couple of weeks. I'm still kind of putting it through its paces. But the real question I'm trying to answer is, is what's the kind of the ideal input level to make sure that you get the least amount of noise in your signal and in your, in your final audio signal. So what I did was I actually recorded um, with this setup here, again, use the same mic every single time and recorded at different input levels, some pink noise generated from my iPhone. And I just held the iPhone up here by my mouth um, so that I could kind of, you know, keep that variable the same, uh, same microphone. So that's the same variable each time. And what we're not, we're not doing here is we're not really measuring the, the noise level of the microphone itself, but what we're trying to do is measure the noise floor that's generated by the Zoom H1 audio recorder just relative to each other at the different input levels. So to do this test, I have an app on my phone that produces some noise. And the reason I did that rather than just talking was I needed the noise to be, or the sound, to be very even in terms of producing the same um, loudness each time I did a different input level. So I recorded at a variety of different input levels, 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, and 95, just to kind of uh, move across the whole spectrum of input levels there, and to compare the noise floor on each of them. So in each case, I had the noise generated from my phone, phone at the exact same level and held it right up near my mouth here to get it close to the, you know, at a kind of at a, at a practical level, this is where about the sound is coming from. Um, relative to the microphone and uh, recorded those different input levels, then brought the, the, each of those clips into Adobe Audition and normalized each of them to minus 6 dB. So that would give you a sense for the practical noise floor um, by recording at these different input levels. Opened them up and highlighted the entire clip of each clip and came up to effects amplitude and compression, and we chose normalize. And for normalize, we normalized to minus six dB, and uh, that gave us kind of a practical level. Now, the idea here is that that's kind of a good practical level to mix your, your final signal to, and that would give you a sense for what the practical noise floor is going to look like recorded at these different input levels. So here we have uh, samples where I recorded at an input level of 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, and 95. Um, first of all, just a note here on an input level of 20. I actually saw a post in a forum online, which is pretty interesting. A fellow who, I'll, and again, I'll, I'll leave the link down below. Somebody who knows more about audio engineering and has a little bit more expertise than I do, certainly, um, which isn't hard to do. I uh, actually did some more probably scientific tests with, um, with the Zoom H1. And what they found was that if you use an input level below 20, the Zoom H1 actually applies what's called digital attenuation. And what that means is that the Zoom H1 is actually trying to make the signal quieter, but it's doing it in the digital stage. Now, taking a step back, the way that uh, all recording, digital recording chains work these days is you have a microphone, which is an analog device. It captures a sound and creates a signal, sends that to a preamplifier, which brings the signal, amplifies the signal up to a line level. And then that line level is sent through an analog to digital converter and uh, then usually recorded to, you know, some sort of digital media, whether it's an SD card or whatever. Um, but what the Zoom H1 is doing, if you're recording below an input level of 20, is it takes the input signal through the microphone, uh, through the preamplifier. And if there's any sort of, uh, if the signal's too loud at that level, that analog preamplifier is going to saturate and start to distort. And then it sends the signal through the analog to digital converter into the digital stage. 
it uh, then applies the digital attenuation after the, the distortion has already happened and it records that to your SD card. So this would actually, for me, is very helpful to understand because that's that explains, I believe, why I was getting all sorts of nasty distortion when I attempted to record that um, rock concert a few weeks ago because I had the input level set to 7 out of 100 getting a signal off of the soundboard into the Zoom H1. And it didn't look like it was clipping just by looking at the meters, but when I got it back and listened to it, it was just horribly distorted. And um, I think what was happening there was that the soundboard signal coming into the Zoom H1 was so hot that it was distorting in the analog preamps in the Zoom H1. And so once it applied that digital attenuation later on down the chain, it was already too late. The, the distortion was already occurring. So what I think the practical takeaway here is if you're going to be recording live concerts, the Zoom H1 may not be a great choice for you. Or if you're going to be recording any sort of very loud sound source, because once you get below minus or once you get below an input level of 20, um, the Zoom H1 isn't really, in my opinion, very effective. Above 20, however, it does look pretty interesting. So what I've done for each of these clips, again, after normalizing to minus 6 dB, I've highlighted a section of sound and we brought up our amplitude statistics. You can get to that in addition, audition by going to window amplitude statistics. And what it does here is it just graphs the noise level that we've selected. And so you can see here for the input level of 20, our noise floor starts somewhere in about the minus 38 range. And the average is probably somewhere, somewhere here in the minus 45. That's pretty noisy. So recording at an input level of 20 for a dialogue for this particular mic didn't work very well. Um, we're getting a pretty noisy signal. Then um, again, this is not so much a test of the, the microphone because I use the same microphone in each of these recordings. It's to give you a sense for the practical differences in the noise floor um, for the Zoom H1 between these different input levels keeping all the other variables the same. So at the input level of 30, looks like our um, noise floor starts at about minus 45. So looking better there already. And the average is probably pretty good here, probably about minus 52, maybe minus 51. So actually looking pretty good there. Um, moving on up to input level of 40, the noise floor pipe starts at about 43, 43 and a half, and average is probably 49 and a half or so. Again, pretty good. That's getting, you know, that's definitely better than the 20 input. 60 is very similar here. Again, starting at about maybe minus 42 and probably averaging somewhere minus 49 and a half. Input level of 80 now is interesting. Looks like the average has definitely come up here. So we're starting to get noisier and we're probably more in the 47 range, I would guess, minus 47. So definitely starting to get noisy. And then here for 95 it was interesting the noise floor starts really early minus 38 um, it's not a whole lot um, and the average still appears to probably be around 48 or 49 maybe 48 um, so it is definitely noisier than you know down here at 40 but uh, you're definitely getting some noise that's starting to creep in at a much higher noise floor so is this a uh, you know, this will this will change when you use a different mic, you know, a microphone that may have a higher output level. But the differences between these is more measuring the, you know, the preamplifier noise in the Zoom H1. And so what does this mean in practical terms? What it means to me is probably your best bet in terms of input level for recording dialogue is probably going to be somewhere between 40 and 60. Now, one question you may have, which is a very fair question, is why don't you recommend 30? Now, I'm not entirely sure, but in the forum post that I linked to down below, the fellow that did the tests with the H1, what he found was that if you plug in a set of headphones into your H1, and I actually reproduced this on mine, then change your input level from 36 to 37, you'll hear an audible click. So the Zoom H1 is doing something between those two input levels. Not entirely sure what that is. But in his measurements, he found that 37 produced the best signal to noise ratio of any other setting on the H1. And um, the difference between the input level of 30 and 40 in my tests weren't huge. Um, but when you start to get too low uh, for dialogue, you're going to start to run in some, some issues. But in any case, I found that 40 is a very good signal to noise ratio and probably my, probably my preferred input level 
Go ahead and leave comments down below. If you think there's something that's uh, flawed about this little test that I've done here, would love to hear your input. Please keep it constructive um, so that we can all learn together. And uh, I hope that was helpful for you. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon. Thank you.